So after this Tim Zhu Brian Mendoza fight, some people picked up the Abner Maris criticism of Tim Zhu not using his jab enough, right? Now, as per usual, it's a lot more complicated than that. It's easy to look at punch stats or what a guy is doing and say, well, he needs to do this or that more, right? Without understanding why it is that he's doing what he's doing, how his skill set, lack of natural ability or maybe too much certain kind of ability, his physical and technical skill set basically, right? Uh, his stature, arm length, you know, how that actually dictates what it is that he's doing, what sort of strategy, what sort of tactics he's bringing to the table, you know what I mean? It's um, These takes tend to be very reductionist and don't take into account what's actually happening, right? At the end of the day, Tim Zhu beat Brian Mendoza's ass. I gave Brian only one round in this fight, the fourth. He got pushed back, and in the early rounds, he was very competitive. He was competitive throughout, more so early on, and was lending a similar amount to Tim Zhu. Maybe outlanded him in a couple of those rounds, barely. But Tim Zhu bossed them. He bossed these rounds. I give when rounds are close, the aggressor wins, right? Secondary scoring criteria. Anyway, let's talk about, hopefully I could show you this little bit without getting my uh, video taken down. It's been a minute since we did a film study. But let's talk about why Tim Zhu did what he did, right? Didn't use his jab as much as some people would have wanted him to. So Tim Zhu was the shorter man here, right? With slightly shorter arms. And most importantly, slower feet and slower hands. Right? And Tim Zhu, you could say he's a boxer puncher in spots. He could he could do a variety of different things, but if there's one style that predominates is that he's a fighter. And what's Brian Mendoza? A puncher, right? Punchers beat fighters with everything being equal, right? But Tim Zhu had to make sure everything wasn't equal. Right? He had to use what he had his skills, his tool set, his um, liabilities, right? He, his deficiencies, he had to hide those and work within them, right? So you, you won't be able to see Tim Zhu's feet right now as soon as the curtain opens. But you'll be able to deduct what's going on, infer what's going on, right? So Tim Zhu, um, his footwork... Sometimes he brings his feet close together a lot, actually, right? Classical puncher footwork, even though he's a fighter. Uh, a lot of punches will want to get into range and set their back foot, right? Move the front foot into range, and then they can set off power shots, right? But as they're bringing their back foot close to the front foot, they can't throw shit well, not with power anyway not anything really effective right so Tim Zhu wants to get into range and get off power punches from up close right if he if he if he comes into range like that while jabbing right there's not going to be much on the jab most fighters are going to be able to take it if they have to or avoid it and counter him, right? Brian Mendoza is a good counter puncher. I think it's fair to say he hits harder than Tim Zhu. And given the fact that Tim Zhu has been put down before and Brian Mendoza seems to be pretty tough, the more importantly, right, the power to chin um, ratio between these two guys favored. Mendoza, right? So Tim Zhu had to be really careful on the way in. If he were to use, let's say, a pawing jab or use his jab frequently, right? 
there was a good chance you would have gotten countered by Mendoza with something powerful, especially early. Right? So he couldn't give him too much information. And he wanted to study Mendoza. And he wanted to make him work. Mendoza likes to move around a lot, right? Use his quicker feet so that he can pick his spots and throw with power. He doesn't throw much of a jab himself. He just He's very fleet-footed. He moves around. He's kind of an ambush guy, right? He'll move around, set his feet, and then throw with power. He likes to pick when exchanges take place. Or he likes to be able to surprise you where you can't exchange with him. Right? He's a mobile puncher that will exchange, but he wants to exchange on his terms. Right? So he takes his time. He doesn't throw a lot of punches. And that's how he's able to keep his power late and just throw harder on average by throwing fewer with more fewer punches but more powerful each and individual shot and Tim Zhu made him work right so Tim would just walk into range a lot of the times without jabbing right because if he's walking into range and jabbing a lot he's gonna he's likely to get countered especially early by this guy who's gonna have more power early right and who hits hard so he made him work so that his power wouldn't be there later on or wouldn't be the same. He dictated to him when Brian Mendoza would throw punches so he couldn't set his feet, right? And because Tim Zhu has slower feet, he's got slower hands, he has to fight within his limitations to take away Brian Mendoza's best attributes. And that, in this case, meant walking in behind a tight guard without jabbing, right? Because that, that would have been more dangerous. Covering up and making Mendoza work, right? Making him sweat. Taking the play away from Mendoza, not allowing him to... Which would have been a lot easier for the faster-footed, faster-handed, harder-hitting Mendoza, who like, who's mobile and a mobile puncher. If, if Tim just went in behind a shorter jab with slower feet, right? Not as fleet footer, less lateral movement, right? That would have given Mendoza a lot of chances to hit him on the way in with big power. So Tim Zhu wouldn't expose himself. He would walk into range where Mendoza had to punch out his gloves and then that allowed Tim Zhu to take the play away from Mendoza and pick his spots, not get countered, right? He was dictating. Now, if you were the taller guy, or at, at least as tall, with also fast feet and faster hands maybe, going in behind a jab, right, where he's able to set his feet just as quick or quicker than Mendoza and has his hand are just as fast and the jab is just excellent, fast, straight to the target and hard, like Golovkin, right, which he's not, then yeah, going behind that kind of a jab, rapier jab and bust him up. Anyway, you're going to see Tim Zhu bring his feet close together, getting into range, and Mendoza taking advantage of that, right? Like what everybody who fights Canelo should be doing, especially since they're bigger, longer, taller, they hit harder, right? They're sh bigger, stronger, so they have a better chin, maybe, or the chin-to-power ratio favors them, you know what I mean? So when you look at Tim Zhu's feet here, right? He's, he was about to bring his back foot close, right? And Brian Mendoza saw that and took advantage of it. But Tim Zhu knows what he's doing. He knows his liabilities. You, you're you're going to have to be super quick or you're going to have to faint. You're going to have to take the play away from him to catch him slipping right now, right? But Tim Zhu read what was going on and was able to avoid much damage, right? It got hit a little bit there, but it's not, you know, not a knockout blow or anything. See how much fleet-footed Mendoza is? And see how Tim Zhu is making him work, right? Without really... And Tim Zhu's right there, right? That allows Tim Zhu to be right there and counter. In that instance, Mendoza's quicker feet, better lateral movement, and the fact that he assaulted Tim so much prevented Tim from doing anything back to him, right? But Tim didn't really take any damage. 
and he's making mendels at work and not really get much get much done but he's working right now in this instance when tim zhu was actually jabbing right he was very selective with his jab he couldn't just approach mendoza well he could have but if he just approached mendoza the same way over and over or established more of a pattern it would have been easier to counter him so sometimes tim zhu would bring his back foot close to his front foot because he just wanted to get close to him right have mendoza punch at him while he's out of his boxing stance but cover it up have mendoza punch at him put that foot in front set and try to counter. It didn't work in many instances because his feet ain't fast enough. In this instance, and the the more the fight went on, the later we it got, um, the more he was doing this, right? So what he would do, he'd switch it up and then he'd step forward with his front foot like you're supposed to when you're jabbing, right? So that, that was a power jab that he would step into and he would mix it up to keep Mendoza guessing, right? And more often than not, he would land that jab and sometimes follow it up with the right hand, right? Which was a very successful combination for him or feint the jab like this and hook off it, right? Do different things. See? One, two. Very successful. So, he didn't use his, he used his jab sparingly, but he made it count. And when he wasn't using his jab, that was deliberate too. What's he going to do here? Right? He did it again. And that kept Brian Mendoza guessing, who, for the most part, had Tim Zhu bringing his feet close together and covering up and just walking straight in, which, you know, gave Mendoza opportunities, but not any real openings. So Mendoza would throw and then Tim Zhu would try to counter him. And so Mendoza wouldn't get a lot of stuff done. Sometimes he did. And then he had to get out of there or he was taking punches. Also, Tim Zhu started catching him as Mendoza was opening too. See how he hooked off the jab? He feinted the jab, right? Because he, he just threw a big jab in right hand, stepped into it. Now he feinted the jab and went with the left hook but really it's about the right hand didn't work changes the angle resets right feigning with the left hand fainted upstairs right jabs to the body so Tim Zhu has a decent jab B level I would say it's a good jab which also means that, especially when he's a shorter guy, right, it could get him in trouble. If if he had an A-level jab and some of the physical advantages or at least wasn't given up these physical advantages like Golovkin, then you would see a different jab. But he does what he has to do to win, right? And another thing that we saw in this fight from Tim Zhu was just improved defense, right? And in the form, he would shoulder roll a little bit, right? Philly shell. Um, but for the most part, the improved defense was just keep keeping his hands up, right? If you're keeping your hands up, well, one of the side effects of that is, well, you ain't throwing as much, right? So, Tim Zhu is not Golovkin, right? He might be built like Miguel Cotto, right? Short for the weight, stocky, blah, blah, blah. But he doesn't have Cotto's fast feet. He doesn't have Cotto's hand speed. And he's not a turnaround southpaw with a strong hand in front, right? And he doesn't have that kind of amateur pedigree that Koto had and doesn't have that kind of style. He fights the way he does. And this isn't me saying that, obviously I already did, that Tim Zhu's jab is perfect, right? I'm not saying that he couldn't improve his jab, right? But just saying, oh, he should jab more, well, that's that's not how you improve Tim Zhu, right? <laughs> that's too simplistic. 
um, you his jab right giving his liabilities certain deficiencies right and given his advantages given the style that he was facing right punchers beat fighters so you have to you have to limit what you give to the puncher right you have to limit the information you give him maybe that's one way to approach it and make him work so that you get to study him and see what it is that he's doing right just walk in with your hands down and watch what he's doing pay attention to what he's doing and try to work off of that make him work right Take the play away from him. Dictate. That's what he did. Right? He was puppeteering his opponent. Making him fight the way he doesn't like to fight. Right? Making making Mendoza punch when Mendoza really, maybe, in many instances, didn't want to punch. But he had no choice. Because Tim Zhu would just walk into range and would fucking hit him. So Mendoza had to he had to show him something. And Tim Zhu was just keeping his cards close to his chest. Tim Zhu was. And working off what Mendoza was doing. And once he figured him out a little bit, then he started jabbing more. Started mixing it up and using a good jab. Could he have done that more? Well, yeah. But the way he improves his jab and you know uses it more... Well, first he has to fix his footwork, improve his foot speed, right? Improve his footwork, work on hand speed, uh, work on fainting, right? There's a lot of things that come before the jab. A good jab happens, right? Again, just saying, throw more jabs, he probably would have gotten put on his ass if he just came out there jabbing, looking to have a jabbing contest. Mendoza would have danced around him, picked a spot when Tim was maybe reaching a little bit with the jab and counter with the right hand over it, right? There's more than one way to skin a cat and this, like, redu- these reductionist takes or one-size-fits-all approach obviously don't work in boxing, right? So, no, not a perfect performance. Tim Zhu's not a perfect fighter. Yes, he should improve his jab, but... Let's understand what it is that he's doing before we can actually criticize the guy and give him pointers on how to improve the jab, right? Because again, just throwing the jab, throwing more jabs, he probably would have lost the fight. I'm just saying. Thanks for watching.